Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. I'm going to show you around some parts of Tokyo today and I often went to the secondhand designer bag store so I wanted to show you around and we can check out the prices together and what's available. Now I did go at the end of last year around October so some of these bags may still be there if you're planning to go to Japan but yes, first shop here is Brand Collect. Now this was in I believe in Water Sando and actually their pricing was pretty reasonable compared to some of the other stores I looked at. That's a newer Chanel bag. They even had some adorable Fendi fur charms, monster charms, which I really wanted to buy that one, but I just bought a bag uh, earlier that week, so I didn't. But it was only like $200 for the monster charm, and like, I've always wanted one, so I don't know why I didn't buy that, to be honest, but you know, I was trying to be good. You know what it's like when you're on holiday, you just want to bloody buy everything. But yeah, how cute were these little bag charms in here? Uh, the little bumblebee, that was the one I really wanted, that purple one. This is a classic flap, around $5,000, vintage. And I am obsessed with this colour combination on this Bulgari bag. It's around the $1,000 Australian dollar mark, so a really good deal. Uh, uh, Jimmy Choo bag? And a Christian Louboutin bag there. Uh, oh, never heard of that brand. And yeah, panning over here, we have some more Chanel, Bottega, Dior. This was a fairly small store, but I would recommend it. They had a few vintage gems like that gorgeous big CC jumbo. What is the price? Yeah, around 5000 Not bad. They were around retail price, those... Actually, they were less than retail, the um, Pegasus Charms and Garden Party, Pico Tin. Oh, another Pico Tin. Nothing that I was particularly looking for. I already kind of have a Pico Tin. But look at that special order, grey with Anemone. And this Kelly is exactly like my vintage Kelly, actually, but it was a bargain deal. Um, a Duma backpack, a cult classic. Gorgeous, they have two available. Yeah, I think it was around 6,000-ish for that one, Australian. And yeah, that red Kelly in the corner, um, that vintage one, was an amazing price. Then we have a Stella Rob bag, some Stella McCartney there, the Fella Bella. Hey guys, that shop brand collect in, uh, where are we? Are we still in on Montesando? <laughs> yeah, was so good. They had so much better deals than some of the other stores we were looking at. They had a vintage Chanel Jumbo for... I think it was around the 6000 Australian dollars. Pretty good price considering now, you know, that bag has become super hyped. They even had a vintage Chanel backpack for around the similar price, which, you know, I've seen them selling for over 10k. They had a Rouge Vif Kelly 28, literally the exact same one that I have. Condition was not as good as the one I have. It was a bit beat up. It was about, what, like six, 7000 Six thousand, couldn't believe it. It was like a complete bargain in there. Honestly, that's probably where you can find the best gems. They even had like a Pegasus charms for less than retail. So um, yeah, that was that was a really good store, guys. Like if you're in a modest sando, that's definitely the one to go to if you want to find like a little surprise bargain. Honestly, even the Bulgari bag was cute. It was like this really funky green and pink color. I was loving it. Um, yeah, I already bought a bag, so obviously not going to buy anything else. There was a Fendi monster in there I was tempted to buy, but I don't know, probably need to calm down for a little bit. Still got two weeks left of the holiday. Around in Modesanda, they have so many trendy cafes. This one had some records and cute little souvenirs, like a, this bear with a fancy pearl necklace. And yeah, um, I, maybe it's called Sweet Things or something. Can't quite see, but... Yeah, I did like that little bear there, but I bought a lot of plushies on this holiday. These cakes looked to die for. Then, yeah, some croissant drink. Something interesting there. <laughs> I didn't get to eat that, but looking back, that looks uh, pretty good, to be honest. Well, this looks like an interesting store. If you want to buy some knickerbockers, you can totally... This is the place to go. Cuthbert and Co.
later on that day, we were lucky enough to stumble across a human-made store, and they had a launch that day, so there was a giant line. Uh, the designer of human-made is Nigo, who also designs Bathing Ape, and he actually collaborated with Louis Vuitton as well, but it's very hyped up, and when they drop certain collections, um, they're usually hard to get, but we didn't find anything. We also went over to Louis Vuitton, you know, doing some luxury browsing, had some exotic Capucines here. How gorgeous is that iridescent holographic Capucines? They're pretty interesting, the finishes they do. Very different to what you'd see at like, you know, Hermes or Fendi or something. They do these really crazy exotics. That one had a little shirling strap and a fluffy handle. That was quite sweet as well. Then these puffy twist bags and shirling Dauphine. Oh, they were hideous. Kind of look like Crocs, but... um designer version and this Capucines had a gorgeous little inlaid pink logo so they had a lot of selection of limited editions here actually and um, yeah they didn't disturb me while I was filming which was pretty lucky but I'm assuming there's music happening so hence my voiceover oh what do you think of that guys that's pretty impressive in glass boxes and oh that was probably my favorite look at that so uh, disco Capucines right it's like a space age. And then there was some, um, what are they called? Those pillow bags. I have a mental block. Cous cou cousin bag? Yeah. Oh, and this was the Hermes window. Now, I did go into Hermes, and they actually had a guitar charm, but I decided not to buy it, even though, like, I don't know why I didn't buy it, actually, because it's actually quite rare to find the guitar charm, but I just was like, oh, I'm not sure about it. But yeah, I probably should have bought it now looking back. But anyways, it was nice to browse in this store in a Modisando. Um, the line wasn't long at all. But yeah, in every Hermes store, they have like a really interesting window display. All the stores are different. And yeah, that's me doing some selfies, you know, just in front of a cafe we went to. I'm like, oh, look, my bag matches. Isn't this fancy? Wow. Now, I think this cafe was like an Italian themed cafe, which was pretty interesting. And yes, oh my gosh, that's my new bag, my mosaic bag. Still in my honeymoon phase with that bag. We had some arancini balls and of course, like, you know, a little cocktail. Why not? They were pretty good, but um, yeah, I would say the cocktail was worth it. Yeah. And um, yeah, I spotted a lady with a cute little Goyard bag there. I know that one is quite popular. Uh, very chic in the black. Alex is just, uh, you know, chilling. Then this was Ragtag. So um, I went to Ragtag quite a few times just to see um, if I could find any cool new clothes. And I did um, have some interesting designers, you know, contemporary brands, designer brands. They even up the top of the stairs had a luxury handbag section where they had, you know, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Hermes. But yeah, there was nothing like, you know, that, that I found that was like amazing. I think I bought a few like trousers and tops or whatever. That was a La Bueve blazer around the $900 mark. You know, you've got Mesa Margiela, Dries Van Norton. Uh, that looks a bit like Balenciaga there, I'm assuming. And yeah, some really cool contemporary bags. Look at that. What do you reckon, guys? Oh, what else is here? Hmm. Oh, a lot of Comme de Garçon as well. Which was cool. Oh, and this is the kids' bathing ape store. How hilarious is this little, like, noodle pit? Similar to a ball pit, but it's like these, I don't know, little plasticky noodle things. They were so cute, the clothes in here. Um, a bit too small for me, unfortunately. But they did have an adult bathing ape store as well Um, in, uh, I can't remember, Shibuya, I think? Can't quite remember. Uh, yeah, just posing again. La-di-da. Yeah, I actually bought that skirt in Japan as well. I was really enjoying wearing it. And yeah, Alex, I think he bought those shoes in Japan. Starting out again at the Ralph's Cafe. Have some chestnut pecan pie, avocado on toast, some and a nice, roses. A cup of water. A cup of water. Yeah. I got the little bear over here. Thank Alex got the salad. Carb salad. Salad. Mm. Looks pretty good, Alex. It's very good. Yeah. This cafe was literally in the Ralph Lauren store, so you could browse Ralph Lauren if you liked after you 
had some lunch or breakfast or whatever and I would recommend the pecan pie the chestnut pecan pie that was my absolute favorite me and Alex went back there a few times to eat that but the chocolate cake was actually delicious as well I'm more of a sweet tooth than a savory tooth so I had the avocado toast it was okay Alex really loved his salad though um and yeah Ralph's coffee pretty cool the coffee was pretty good too actually for coffee you know me and Alex are from Melbourne so we love our coffee Later on that day, I made it to Mode Off, which had, you know, it wasn't super overpriced, but there wasn't these like really crazy, you know, expensive bags in there, like exotics and all that. It was more like, you know, these like things that are all right, but you could probably find like a really nice gift in here, like a nice wallet or uh, they had a lot of clothes as well. So, um, you know, just panning through, there's a Bottega bag. Uh, had some Prada bags in there, Gucci, even some really cool Issy Miyake if you're into that. Then I, yeah, just that was my outfit. I had my Uniqlo bag on that day. And then some Michael Kors. So you've got some contemporary brands, Loewe in there. Looks like a belt, some little wallets. And then Burberry. And going up, we have some Prada. Uh, I'm filming way too fast. So annoying at myself. Oh, that's an interesting Prada bag. Around the $500 mark. Then some Christian Louboutin. Um, oh, that's a really pretty bag. And to Purnina. Coach. Uh, that looks like Jimmy Choo or something. Coach again. How much is that? Yeah, like 180 Australian dollars-ish. Oh, uh, Coach Swagger Bag, I think. And then you've got, you know, that's a pretty popular looking style there. A top handle bag around the $200 mark. So, I don't know, guys, because we don't really have, like, a Coach Outlet store in Australia. So, is this better than Outlet price? Uh, let me know. I'm not too sure. I'm not, uh, I don't really follow the Coach market myself because um, I know that's a whole other can of worms that I don't want to get addicted to. I do still want to buy like the coach um, heart shaped bag though one day maybe or a really funky shaped one and in here we have some more interesting bags some tote bags some watches sunglasses uh, some older Chanel wallets that one was around 400 a bit of a patent leather one there but it's a bit it's a bit faded you know it's got a bit of a discoloration happening then a lanyard from Chanel and that Chanel, you see, it's a bit roughed up, right? It's like not not amazing in here, is it? It's not, not like, you know, take it or leave it kind of thing. Oh, there's an Hermes wallet back there. Oh, it's around $2,000. Hmm, nah. There's some pretty little scarves in here, like a vintage Hermes. A Doc Martens bag shaped like a heart. It's kind of interesting. And then that little woven uh, Tory Burch style in there. Jill Sander, Balenciaga, and yeah, they had a lot of like, you know, coach section as well. <laughs> if you're a true coach collector, you might really be into this. And they were a lot cheaper than the ones hanging on the rail. 40 bucks! Is that a really good deal? That's pretty cute. Um, Michael Kors there. How much is that? $120. Kate Spade. Oh, I love Kate Spade. So cute. Then what is this? Over here, hmm, bit of a minimal style. Some paisley print happening. Can't tell what brand that is. Uh, Burberry Blue Label. Ah, okay. That's a licensed uh, label from Burberry, which they don't do anymore, actually, because it was really, uh, it was kind of tarnishing the brand's, I guess, brand value of the brand. Burberry kind of stopped doing all their diffusion lines. But it was, uh, it's still like very much heavily in Japan. You'll find it in secondhand stores, Burberry Blue. And it is a lot cheaper than, you know, the Burberry of today. Then we have some, you know, classic monogram pieces. This little key clay, 120 bucks. Hmm, not bad. Not sure about the condition though. You know, the key, how much is the key clay now, guys? Like 500 bucks? Like I can't even keep up anymore. Oh, multicolor. Multicolor always looks so cute in wallets and like SLGs, but the only thing about multicolor is that it does chip and discolor kind of easily, which is annoying because you just kind of want to keep it pristine because it looks so pretty. Yeah, 
that's a cans bag from Louis Vuitton. Then, you know, a messenger, a uh, Deauville. That's quite nice, actually. I quite like the shape of that. Um, some funky pants in here. What are they? Issy Miyake. Oh, yes. I totally forgot. I actually found... Oh, Issy Miyake. Please, please, I think that is. I found a really nice Issy Miyake blazer in the thrift store, actually. And I have not worn it yet. So, hopefully I'll show you guys that later. Um, but I've always loved the Pleats Please pants. Akura Tokyo. Ooh. Oh my gosh. They had so many beleads in here. And you guys know how I'm a, kind of obsessed with the bolide. That one was, f yeah, like 6000 for the Anemone. It's not like amazing deals, you guys. Like, it's very hit and miss. Like, you know, a lot of people say in Japan, you're going to find amazing deals. You may, you may not. But uh, a lot of these stores know that these things are, you know collectible they're valuable rare and they price them accordingly so unless you just you know by chance come across something that is a little bit undervalued you might come across a good deal but usually they're pretty like on the ball and they probably also get a lot of tourists coming through these stores oh my gosh supreme lv that's quite rare oh that's quite cute that little yellow and blue one i think is that from um virgil oh birkin 25 in blue electric then oh this is the good stuff gold on gold gold birkin and a etain or something birkin maybe maybe a tube what do you guys think of blue electric i'm kind of on the fence about it like i kind of love it as a color but oh i don't know it's hard to match oh that's a shirling capucines you know similar to the capucines we saw earlier today but it's probably cheaper in here um well, then we have a kelly 28 kind of looks like in Celia and Retourne, a Vert Fizz um, Constance wallet, then more of a slouchy Kelly there, Birkin 30, 35, can't quite tell, 11,000 ish. Oh my god, that is so pretty. Sorry guys, I screamed. Um, I love that color. It looks like Rose Extreme or Rose Mexico or something. I'm always obsessed with that color. Like, that is such a dream Kelly bag right there. Like, I actually, oh my gosh, I really overreacted when I saw that, right? Then we have some Chanel, you know, you've got the Coco handle, you've got the mini square, you've got the walk, you've got the vanity, you've got the circle bag, you've got a top handle, you've got a vintage, then you've got this patent leather one. Yeah, oh, Burberry. Hmm. A little Coco handle's quite cute. Yeah, this is a Ricardo Tishi era here, and then you've got the more Christopher Bailey bags, Bottega, Daniel Lee. You've got the, you know, little Speedy HL, a Dauphine. So interesting just seeing all the eras of bags just smooshed together. Like, it's definitely not as curated, this store, but they have a lot of cool bags. Um, You know, I find some stores in Japan, they just focus on, like, certain eras. Like, cert like just 90 Chanel or, you know, just this kind of specific, you know, era of Hermes. But, yeah, most stores will have, like, a mixture of like, you know, new and old bags. Oh, love the croissant bag. So cute. Then that like, um, locket bag, I think it is. And oh, that's a bit of a rare little clutch piece up there with the sunnies. Wow. Oh, what's that? That's nice. I like the bag charm. Valentino. Oh, gonna go out now. Okay. Where are we going now? Oh, okay. Coach. Yep. Gucci, Fendi. Ah, another store. Aria Jewelry. Okay. Um, yeah, I have to try and find where this is, because I can't remember where I am now. Um, but this could be like a smaller town. Oh, Hermes bags, my favourite. And then you've got Chanel. And we're just going down here to, it looks like Furla. Cam, oh, that's a, sorry, it's not a Cambon tote. What is that? A medallion tote. Ooh. Okay, my hand is covering medallion tote again. Some wallets, a bit of a random bag. Oh, papillon. That's also like a bit of a papillon shape, but it's um Chanel. <gasps> oh, a thousand bucks. That's actually a pretty good deal for that denim one. A garden party there. Oh, a Lindy. Oh, I like that color. Super white. 7K, not bad. Steven Sprouse collection. Oh, why don't you guys ask me about the roses collection the other day? Um, I like it. I love how fluorescent the roses are. 
Then we got the Kusama, the modern day Kusama collection, the Emperor Neverfull. I do think that Louis Vuitton expected Kusama to sell a lot better than it did. And I did see a lot of Kusama in the consignment stores. Oh, Ferragamo, love that little top handle bag. And some Chanel here. Actually, we've oh, that vintage Jumbo is a bargain. 4K. And that one's not in bad condition, is it? Oh, love that. That little 90s top handle, 5,000. Oh, that's a gem. Mm. Oh, guys, you should go, go back to this store and grab those. They are really nice. Oh, boy bag. Yeah, I mean, well under retail there. Oh, that's an interesting flat bag, isn't it? It's got, like, flat quilting. I quite like that. Little vintage bucket here. This was actually quite reasonable, this store. Hmm. Okay. Well, where else are we going now? Uh, got some Louis Vuitton monogram. Gotta be honest, Louis Vuitton monogram gets a little bit boring because you just see it everywhere. But they do have a really good selection of different styles. Oh, cakes. Why am I always eating cake? Like, every day. Anyways, I guess I was on holiday. And, um, oh, they looked pretty good. I wonder if I got one of those. I actually can't remember. But I did eat a lot of cakes when I was in Japan. Mmm. Harbs. Okay. Oh, I'm back in the store. Okay, so this is a beautiful Luwebe clutch with some leather marquetry. And you've got a hammock. Look at that little hammock bag with the fireworks. Wow. Hold on. Am I just, like, repeating myself again with the same footage? It's okay. We'll have a look at it again, right? Oh, wow. Celine? Oh, this is like newer Celine. And, um, oh, okay. Now I'm just t taking photos. That's a Amazona bag, that multicolor one we saw. Um, oh, that's a pretty rare little hammock bag there. Oh, where am I near? I don't know where I am, guys. Sorry. I just, like, inserted these random pics into my video. Okay, well, hope you enjoyed that, guys. Um, and, yeah, I'll see you guys on my next video. Uh, sorry about the randomness of the footage, but, yeah, it was kind of like that filming in Japan. I just kept filming everything I could to show you. And, um, yeah, I hope you found it helpful or relaxing or whatever. So I'll see you guys on my next one. And please like and subscribe. I still have plenty of footage to show you uh, with my trip yeah, I had in Japan. And, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.